This is a follow-up video to the one I just did on Islam 101. It made me start thinking about the Old Testament and how a lot of people mistakenly think that Old Testament law in the Bible was just as severe as Sharia law is now. And of course, you know, when you give it a cursory reading, that's going to be what you're thinking of, and understandably so. So in front of you now, posted by, you know, um, another YouTuber, is a video, one of the more shocking ones I've seen, on Muslim stoning. I'm going to give you a link to that video in the video description. And in the video comments, I posted a bunch of links to the stoning verses in the Old Testament and in the New Testament where Christ actually revoked the stoning law. Here, though, what hit me about this video and its graphic nature, and I'm not going to play it because it's so disturbing, is why would God even invent the stoning law? Okay, distinct from what you're seeing on screen here. Okay, the woman in the center here, it's sort of like a turquoise. This is the woman being stoned. All these, and they look like they're mostly men, are standing around her. And if I were to play the video, you will see for the next four minutes them literally throwing stones, deliberately trying to hit her head right there. And then every once in a while stopping and lifting the cloth here to see if they hit her well enough, to see if she's dead. They stone her to death. This is, you know... She, you know, a live shooting, as it were, of a camera of somebody using his cell phone for crying out loud to, to show her being stoned to death in this video, live. Okay? She's dead by the end of it. And all this pit that she's sitting in right now ends up getting filled up with stones. There are a bunch of stones all around where these guys are standing. They're going to stand back a little farther, and they're going to throw stones that are as hard as they can. That is the practice of stoning. It is the same practice of stoning that is in the Bible. And down farther here, I've got these are the verses. They're not all the verses, but they're the salient ones. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, all right, why did God have that rule? Because look how barbaric it is. When you play this video, it's going to be hard to watch. I don't know which is worse, the enjoyment that they have in stoning her, or the fact of them stoning her, or the fact of the guy recording it. So, is God that barbaric, too, that you have all these verses about stoning? Okay, it's a valid question. And you know, your average atheist is going to say, well, you know, then that means the God of the Bible is bad too. He's going to not know that Christ revoked the law, you know, in John 8. Okay, that's the pericope adultery, which, you know, a lot of scholars say isn't there, but it really is there because the chapter begins and ends with stoning. So the first 10 verses in John 8 about a woman being stoned. They're going to Christ and asking, should we do this to this woman? And he says, whoever's among you without sin, you cast the first stone, which means that nobody's going to throw any stones, which is totally the opposite of what you're seeing in this video here. Okay, but that's Christ talking. Isn't he the same God who was the God of Israel in the Old Testament? So why was it okay in the Old Testament to do this horrible thing you're going to see on this video? Because that's exactly how it was done. There were like three or four crimes for which it was done. Why did God put it there? Well... If you actually start looking this up, the first verse that you come to with stoning in it, 
the first chapter you come with two stone in it is Exodus. Before, before, before Israel became a nation. That's when she goes out. Exodus means to go out. And in those particular verses, Moses is saying, well, they might stone me. So what does that tell you? Well, in Egypt, Israel was for 400 years, and now they're leaving. And that means there was a custom in Egypt of stoning before Israel was called out as a nation, which means all these Arabs here, and you'll see it's the video goes on, that they're in a sort of desert area. Looks like it might be Saudi Arabia. I couldn't, I, it, I can't really tell what kind of Arabic they're speaking. Um, there was a practice in Egypt before Israel became a nation of stoning. So the law, the Mosaic law, is built around stuff everybody knows. And really, quite frankly, when you stop to take it apart, take apart the Mosaic law, you'll find out that God took pagan rules and then changed their meaning. Okay, for the pagan, this activity of stoning has a different meaning in the Mosaic Law. And frankly, when you look at the Mosaic Law in the verses, you realize, oh, only a few activities were subject to stoning. And then how often do you see people actually stoning anybody? You don't. The only time stoning comes up in the Bible, other than those first instances, okay, where you have them here, See, look, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, 1 Samuel is when they're talked about it. So where are the other verses? How often was stoning actually used by Israel? Obviously not very much. There were rules laid out in Exodus. Exodus was about Moses being afraid of being stoned. Leviticus is at you know, about when you do stone. Numbers. Moses is afraid of being stoned. Okay? Oh. Well, here's a verse that's an actual law about stoning. Here's a verse, actual law about stoning in more detail. And another one in 24.14. But Numbers, 1 Samuel, Exodus, those aren't verses where God's commanding you to get stoned. Those are verses where the people who are speaking in the verses, namely Moses and to a certain extent David, they, they're afraid of being stoned. So then stoning wasn't used as a capital crime very often. But it was used when you're angry, like up here. When you want to vent your frustration. That's how the pagans did it. Not how God ordered it. That's real important. The point I'm trying to make here is when you see something barbaric in the Bible, look very closely at the context. And you'll notice that, you know what? He's taking a barbaric people. See? A barbaric people. Like these people. They're still barbaric. He took them out of took them out of the land. These people are still, as it were, in the old land. Okay? And they're all busy, see, throwing stones. Look how many stones are in there now. And she's already on the ground. And it's only been 37 seconds. That's what you can, you can conclude. Israel was like these people you're seeing in the video. Now, how do you take a people like this and make them civilized? You have to start with what they know. And then you gradually teach them so that by the time Christ is there, okay, which is, you know, because the Acts is the stoning of Stephen. But here's Christ saying, hi, you, 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 you know, you who throws the first stone, you can, if you're without sin, you can throw the first stone. Okay, well, that's entirely the opposite of what you're seeing here. 
See, look how horrible that is. Look how happy they are to stone her. Look how barbaric they are. So the conclusion to draw when you're looking at the Old Testament, or at least let's call it a plausible conclusion, is that Israel was so paganized that she was barbaric, and God had to use barbaric ideas to teach her how to become humane. Okay? To teach her how to become humane. That's my contention. So watch this video if you can bear it. And then think about what would you do if you were taking this kind of people, okay, like that. Look how happy they are to throw stones. What if you had to take those people out of the promised land? Because you promised Abraham, and these are their descendants. And actually the Arabs are Abraham's descendants too. How do you train them? They're animals. So that's the meaning of Israel to history, is he took out a bunch of animals like these people in the video and trained them to become humane. And frankly, the reason I can even sit here and make a civilized video to you is because God did that, because the whole world was like these people in those days. I don't know how much you've read about world culture, but their idea of gods were like Molech. Molech was the, Baal, is another name for him, and Chemosh. Those were so-called gods. They had statues where they sort of looked like Anubis, you know, a, a dog's head. And they had, they were sat on a statue, and they had their arms held out. And you were supposed to put your children in those arms and then set your living children aflame. And while your child burnt to death screaming, you were supposed to have sex. That was considered honoring to the gods. That's what these people, that's their culture. They didn't, they didn't obey what God gave to Israel, although they were related and in the land. They didn't obey it. Instead, they retained the pre, you know, Egyptian. See, look, now he's checking to see if she's dead yet. He's, he's taking her, claw, her top off to say, oh, well, are you dead yet? And if not, well, we're going to do more. Look at that. See how happy they are? That's what Israel came from. That's what the world came from. That's what these people, the Arabs, still are. The Muslim Arabs. Now do you understand the importance of freeing up and, you know, beating Islam. This is what Islam does. It's the last bastion of pre-Mosaic law filth that was common, so common in Egypt, God had to make a stoning law to teach people from the Egyptian practice how to become humane. And the efficacy of that is, well, Exodus Moses is afraid the people will stone him when they first leave the land. Leviticus, this is an actual stoning law. Numbers, Moses is again afraid he's going to be stoned. When Samuel, well, David's maybe going to be stoned. Okay, well, from Moses in 1440 to David in 1000, that's 400 years. And in 400 years, the practice still of, you know, doing what you see here existed. But the Mosaic Law only reserved it for a couple of instances. Because if you have to do this, if you and I today in our civilized society had to stand in a circle like this and actually stone somebody, how many times do you think we're going to want to do it again? Zero. Zero. So God teaches you how to become human by giving you a law that, as it were, forces you under certain rare circumstances to play the beast. And that's one reason Islam is allowed to exist. We get to see them be beasts. See? We get to see them be beasts. 
That was why stoning was instituted by God. See, this is what it's like to be a beast. Is that what human ought to mean? Is that what being godly ought to mean? This self-righteous thing? You see why Christ ruled it out? And that, honey, was 2,000 years ago. These people don't believe in him. They believe in, look at this. That's what they believe in. So now you have maybe a better focus or question you can ask God. Oh, is that why the Mosaic Law is so harsh in places? Take a look. Peace out.